This is the Pixel 6a and I've actually been using this phone for a full month and that's because I wanted to let the dust fully settle with this device before sharing any thoughts on it. Now for some context, last year's Pixel 5a device was actually not released here in Australia and so I haven't used a Pixel A series device since the Pixel 4a two years ago. With that being said, I did use and love both the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro when they were released last year, the former of which I actually called the best phone of 2021 thanks to its price to value ratio. And so given that the Pixel 6a has now joined the design and chipset refresh of those more premium devices, I was super excited to check out this phone. And in a lot of ways, this phone is an almost identical experience to the regular Pixel 6, which is a fantastic result. However, there is one really confusing aspect of that similarity, which I'll get to a little later on. Either way, after a full month of using this phone as my main everyday device, it's finally time to unpack my thoughts on it. You ready? Let's dive in. All right. First things first, I wanna start by clearly stating what is similar about this phone in comparison to the regular, more mid-range Pixel 6, and there are a lot of similarities, so buckle up and let's chat about them. And the first key similarity is the design. In almost every way, this phone looks and feels pretty much exactly the same as the regular Pixel 6, with the only real difference being that the 6a is slightly smaller than the Pixel 6, and it also has a plastic back, whereas the regular 6 has a glass back. But in all honesty, the only way you can feel that difference is in the weight of the two phones. So the 6a does feel quite a bit lighter than the regular Pixel 6, but because both phones have the same glossy finish, they both genuinely feel the exact same in the hand, plastic or no plastic. Now, yes, technically the camera strip on the back is shorter and thinner on the 6a, but in terms of bringing that cool new design language of the Pixel 6 series to the more affordable A series, Google have seriously smashed this out of the park. I will just very briefly mention that the 6a has an IP67 water and dust resistance rating, whereas the regular 6 and 6 Pro for that matter have IP68 ratings. But to be honest, an IP67 rating is still super impressive as this is usually the first way that manufacturers save money with their budget devices. And then we have the haptics. And I'm very pleased to say that the haptics in the 6a are very, very good. Now, they don't have that same subtlety that I raved about with the regular Pixel 6. They are a little more overt, but regardless of that, I've been very happy with the quality of the haptics in this phone. So another tick for Google for bringing great haptics to their budget lineup of phones. One disappointing similarity though is the fingerprint sensor. That was one of the more common complaints with the Pixel 6 lineup, that the in-display fingerprint sensors were slow and unreliable. And Google did mention that they were switching to a different in-display sensor for the Pixel 6a. But despite that supposed change, I have not noticed any speed or reliability improvements in my time using the Pixel 6a. Staying with build quality for a minute, and whilst there are some minor differences in speaker quality between the two devices, I honestly don't really have a preference between the two. Both devices have the same level of output at max volume, and whilst the regular Pixel 6 potentially has a little more clarity, you could argue that the 6a has a little bit more bass. Here, have a listen. Okay, now one obvious similarity between the two devices is the software experience. In fact, there is literally no difference between the two. Everything great about the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro software, like the clean Pixel experience, all of those amazing animations, the fantastic always on display implementation, all of that is exactly the same here on the Pixel 6a. And all of the downsides are present as well, the main of which being the lack of customization flexibility for the home screen launcher. Although I will say it does seem to handle third-party launches just that little bit better than previous Android updates. But I do have to commend Google for providing the same largely excellent software experience as their flagship devices here on their budget device, because for some manufacturers, that's definitely not the case. <laughs> Samsung. Hmm? 
But it's worth pointing out that a lot of what makes the software experience feel so similar is thanks to the specs being nearly identical between the three devices. And that's because the 6A ships with the same flagship level custom made Tensor chipset inside. And that's probably the best part about Google having its own custom made silicon now is that all of their devices, expensive and budget alike, they'll all carry that same flagship level chipset going forward, which is amazing. Now it is worth pointing out that the 6A comes in only one configuration of 128 gigabytes of internal storage and six gigabytes of RAM, whereas the regular 6 has up to 256 gigabytes of storage and a base configuration of eight gigabytes of RAM. But for most users, this difference probably won't be much of a concern. Battery life is also very similar between the two devices, which essentially has meant that I've actually never killed this phone in a single day. Although I will say, I was actually kind of hoping for better battery life on this phone thanks to one key difference between the two devices, which I will get to a little later on. And then we have the cameras. And whilst the 6A actually has the older 12 megapixel main sensor we had on pretty much every Pixel device from the Pixel 2 all the way up to last year's Pixel 5a and not the upgraded 50 megapixel sensor that Google introduced on the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. In real world use, I actually don't think many people will notice the difference between the two. Sure, you might get more natural depth of field when shooting close up subjects on the 6 and 6 Pro thanks to that larger sensor, but you gotta keep in mind, Google had basically spent four years mastering that 12 megapixel sensor, whereas they've had less than one year so far to refine the results from the newer 50 megapixel sensor. And in a lot of scenarios, I actually prefer the results from the Pixel 6a's main sensor than those from the Pixel 6 or 6 Pro. But then aside from that, everything else about the cameras is actually the same between the 6 and 6a. We have the same ultra wide lens, the same eight megapixel selfie camera. And so in terms of camera performance, at least, I really don't think the Pixel 6 is any better than the 6a. All right, now, before we get to the differences between the Pixel 6 and 6a, did you notice those cool colorful lights in the intro of this review? And there's actually some behind me right now, one over there and uh, one over there. Pretty cool looking, eh? Well, they were actually provided by the sponsor of this video, Moonside. These are both called the Lamp One lights, and not only do they look phenomenal straight out of the box with this ultra dynamic color changing effect, but you can even connect the lights using the Moonside app, and this will unlock crazy levels of customization. There's some basic settings that you can play around with on this homepage, but then when you long press any of your lights, you'll be presented with a whole heap of customization tweaks, including a really long list of lighting theme presets, the ability to sync the lights according to your touch, and you can even create your own lighting themes, which is really, really cool. Moonside also has some other cool products on their website, including the Neon Lighthouse and the Neon Hex, and all of their products support smart home integrations, whether it be with Google Home or Amazon Alexa. And in my testing, this functionality has worked beautifully. If you wanna pick up your own Moonside lights, then you can do so using the first link down in the description below. And thanks to Moonside for supporting the channel. And so from there, we have the key differences between the regular Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6a. The first and biggest of which being the displays. So where the regular Pixel 6 has a pretty nice 90 Hertz AMOLED display, the Pixel 6a instead has a fairly stock standard 60 Hertz OLED display. And whilst I totally get the need for Google to differentiate between its budget and flagship lineups, here in 2022, pretty much all reputable mid-range phones in about the same price category as the Pixel 6a have at least a 90 Hertz display, and in some cases, even a 120 Hertz display. I for one am hoping that this is the last 60 hertz display on a Pixel phone. And from here on out, I'd love to see Google just going all out with 120 hertz displays on their entire flagship lineup and reserving 90 hertz panels for their mid-range A-series lineup. With that being said, after about a day or so of using this phone, I actually stopped noticing that it was 60 hertz. And in fact, as long as I'm not comparing it side by side with another device that has a higher refresh rate, I have completely adjusted to this being a 60 hertz display and it's actually not really an issue anymore. Does that mean I'm okay with 60 hertz panels? No, but it does mean that for anyone who hasn't used a device with a fast refresh rate panel in the past, then you won't really have any complaints with the display on this phone. 
Now, the second key difference is that the Pixel 6a does not support wireless charging. And this is definitely a feature I understand Google not including. I'm not gonna dock any points at all for this emission, but it is still, of course, worth talking about given it's really only one of two notable differences. And then aside from the difference in storage and RAM configurations, which I already mentioned, there's really nothing else that differentiates the Pixel 6a from the regular Pixel 6. And so that leads me to the really confusing aspect of this phone, the price. Now for context, the Pixel 6a has launched here in Australia for a price of 749 Australian dollars or 449 dollars if you're in the US. And whilst that's pretty much as to be expected, the real head turner is that just before the 6a was released, you could actually pick up the regular Pixel 6 brand new for even less. Yep, that's right. Thanks to the sometimes overwhelming discounts that hit Android devices within their first year of release, you could have picked up a brand new Pixel 6 from Amazon for 734 Australian dollars. Now, as soon as the Pixel 6a launched, this discounted price disappeared. And now the lowest you can find it for is 873 Australian dollars or 560 US dollars from the US Amazon store. But even without these discounts, the regular Pixel 6 can still be picked up for only $150 more straight from the Google store. And in all honesty, I actually think it's well worth that little bit of extra money. And so for me, whilst the Pixel 6a is a fantastic phone in so many ways, it's let down by one simple factor the price. In my mind, this phone doesn't make much sense to purchase when you've got a slightly better phone that costs just a little more. I think Google really should have set the launch price of the Pixel 6a at $599 Aussie dollars or about $415 US dollars and then it would have been a much more compelling phone for a much larger audience. But as it is, in my humble opinion, the Pixel 6a is beaten out by its own big brother and that's a shame because it's otherwise a really fantastic phone.